Normal and crosswind takeoffs are used by pilots to leave the runway surface and become airborne. Pilots practice takeoffs and landings to ensure they can safely and efficiently take off and climb based on environmental conditions such as winds and obstacles. To conduct normal and crosswind takeoffs and climbouts, first, the pilot must ensure the before takeoff checklist has been completed. Then they visually check for traffic on final for the active runway or approaching other runways. Next, the pilot visually looks at the windsock to obtain the latest information about the wind prior to takeoff. This allows them to make the proper wind correction inputs on takeoff. Before entering the runway surface, the pilot must communicate as appropriate. At an uncontrolled airport, they make the appropriate traffic advisory calls which provide situational awareness for all pilots at and around the airport. At controlled airports, they request takeoff and read back the clearance before entering the runway environment and beginning the takeoff. The pilot then taxis the aircraft into position on the runway and centers the aircraft on the runway with the nose wheel straight as close to the approach end of the runway as practical. Position the flight controls for existing wind conditions. The pilot should turn the yoke into the wind, causing the aileron facing the wind to raise, to provide the appropriate wind correction upon takeoff. They then verify that the HSI heading and magnetic compass heading approximately match the runway heading to confirm proper runway as assigned or selected. The pilot smoothly and continuously advances the throttle to full power and brings their heels to the floor to prevent accidentally touching the brakes. The brake should not be applied past this point unless an aborted takeoff is necessary or an object on the runway poses a hazard to the takeoff. As the aircraft begins the ground roll, the pilot should make the appropriate callouts to ensure the aircraft is fit for takeoff. They call out full power while keeping their hand on the throttle in the event an aborted takeoff becomes necessary. Next, they check the engine instruments, verifying that the power is between 2300 to 2400 RPMs and all other instruments are in the green area of the gauges, and call out 2300 RPMs, engine instruments in the green. As the ground roll continues, the pilot checks the airspeed indicator, and once it shows an increase in airspeed, they announce airspeed alive. Once the aircraft reaches 55 knots indicated airspeed, the pilot calls out rotate and smoothly pitches the nose up until the top of the engine cowling makes the trees disappear and the aircraft leaves the runway surface. At this point, the pilot's eye should move over to the left between the instrument panel and the window frame to keep visual reference to the horizon. This sight picture keeps the pilot from pitching too high and provides constant visual contact with the horizon, ground, and obstacles. As the aircraft continues to climb away from the runway, the pilot should use sight pictures to maintain their desired climb airspeed, as well as scanning the engine instruments to monitor for any abnormalities. The pilot continues to climb into the desired altitude while remaining out of any airspace the pilot has not been cleared into. For example, when departing from New Smyrna Beach Municipal Airport, pilots must not enter Daytona Beach International Airport's airspace that starts at 1200 feet mean sea level. Some helpful tips when conducting normal and crosswind takeoffs and climbs are Be wind conscious when taking off by looking at the windsock or other wind indicators and turn the yoke into the wind. Remember weather observations, such as METARs, are published once an hour and the winds can change before the next METAR is published. Bug the runway heading on the heading indicator to ensure the aircraft is on the right runway and to help fly runway heading if ATC requests. As the pilot smoothly advances the throttle, they will need to increase their right rudder input to counteract the turning tendencies and remain on the runway center line. This rudder input must be maintained and adjusted throughout the takeoff and climb to maintain proper coordination. Be sure to confirm the RPMs, engine indications, and airspeed while saying the callouts. Do not just say them without confirming the desired conditions exist. Use altitude bugs to remain clear of any airspace that may exist above the aircraft that the pilot has not been cleared into. Monitor engine instruments for any abnormalities and be ready for any out-of-the-ordinary situations which may require an off-field landing or to return to the airport. Communicate with ATC or the local traffic to ensure that everyone is situationally aware. When being evaluated by a progress check pilot or designated practical examiner, the pilot must Maintain VY plus 10 knots or minus 5 knots on climb out for private pilots, and maintain VY plus or minus 5 knots on climb out for commercial pilots. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.